Time for our NBA Weekly Roundup. Tom Haberstro so excited he wore a tie for the first time since we've been doing that. That's how pumped he is for these Christmas Day games. Let's run through them here, Tom. We'll start with the marquee matchup, the primetime matchup, the battle for L.A. You got Clippers, you got Lakers. LeBron has been hurt, but he's supposed to be back for this one. What are you looking forward to the most in this game, Tom? You know, it's funny is coming into the season, it was Kawhi Leonard and Paul George who were banged up. But on the other side, the Lakers are coming in banged up with LeBron James having a back a little back strain. And then you have the ankle injury from Anthony Davis that has been uh, nagging him for the last week or so. So coming into this game, everyone wants to see the big two go go against each other, which we did not get in the season opener against these with these two teams. Paul George was still recovering from his double shoulder surgery which seems to have had zero negative effect on him this season. And in 14 games, with Kawhi Leonard and Paul George on the floor this season healthy, uh, they're 11-3, and three, the Clippers. So they've had no preseason, no training camp together, barely any practices together, and they're playing like a juggernaut when those two guys are in uniform. So the Lakers are going to need everybody that they can get in this game because Paul George and Kawhi Leonard will be rested coming into this game. No games on Christmas Eve. And so we are going to be in for a marquee matchup. Uh, and they're going to need as much energy as they can to go against this di deep uh, and talented Clippers team that is looking to end this, this Lakers reign over the last, what, two, three, four, five, six decades? Never met in the playoffs before. It seems like that is inevitable to happen this year. So who do you think shows up with the most to, to prove to a national audience? LeBron, that he's still got it after 17 years, or Kawhi, that he's picking up uh, right where he left off with his new team now? Yeah, I think it's the Clippers. Um, I, I, I look at this situation and think of like the, the little brother who wants to prove to the big brother that they can hang. Uh, it didn't work out for me. I always lost in my pickup games against my brothers in the back <laughs> in, the, in the driveway. But I think Kawhi Leonard and Paul George have enough. And Doc Rivers, too. I mean, we've seen the Lakers have a little bit of a skid here um, with, where the schedule is, has hit them a little bit with the injuries. But I think when you look at the, the Clippers, I think they are looking at this is them trying to, you know, uh, burst on the scene when everyone watches on Christmas Day. They might not have been watching two months ago when game one of the World Series was happening the same night. Um, so I think more eyeballs on this game, and I think Kawhi Leonard and Paul George are ready to show the world that they are not just title contenders. They should be title favorites uh, heading into June. If we dig in just a little bit more on the matchup here, the Lakers have been very successful with going with JaVale McGee. They're going big here. Dwight Howard alongside Anthony Davis. Is that something that you think they're going to be able to do against a Clippers team that can play small and can play very fast? The Clippers can show any action they want, you know, and I think the Lakers are really uh, in the in the same bucket because Anthony Davis hasn't played much at all at the five this season. And I think that might be their best matchup if Kyle Kuzma is healthy and they can get Danny Green out there to spread the floor. Uh, that might be their best matchup. So I think it's almost like uh, Dwight Howard and, and JaVale McGee are almost like innings eaters in the regular season. But come playoff time, I think this is going to be their best lineup with LeBron James at the four. Uh, and and Anthony Davis at the five. But the Clippers can go big or small. Zubats is such that their center has been such an improved player, such a young center who can play both ends of the floor, much improve on the defensive end. And I think they can go Montrez Harrell at the four or the five, and they can just line up basically four or five all-stars in there. And it's going to be a really good um, you know chess match between these two teams, whether the Lakers want to go big and muscle them inside or they're going to try to match up with the wings that they have uh, in, in the Clippers. So I think it's going to be a, a chess match between Frank Vogel, who's the new head coach over there with the Lakers. He might want to stick his check, chest out and show that he belongs as the coach with all the talk of Lionel Hollins and uh, Jason Kidd, two former head coaches on his bench. Uh, he might be the aggressor in this and stay big. Um, but you know what? Come playoff time, I think they, they go small and they use mm. Anthony Davis in space with LeBron James in space and go small so they can open up that paint. Maybe not on Christmas Day, but I think they might keep it in their back pocket for the playoffs. It's funny, a bunch of players and a bunch of coaches who are so accomplished but still want to prove themselves to the national audience on Christmas Day. The Bucks haven't really needed to prove themselves to anyone this season so far. They are head and shoulders looking like the best team in the East, taking on the Sixers, who maybe have underwhelmed just a little bit. I guess the question in this one, can the Sixers slow down this offensive attack from the Bucks? 
Last year, Giannis Antetokounmpo averaged 37 points per game against the Philadelphia 76ers. Joel Embiid had eye-popping stats on the other side, too. And I think with this matchup, the biggest draw for me, uh, not just the East supremacy, this could definitely be, and, and probably the favorite for the East finals. Uh, whoever wins this matchup, in my opinion, uh, in the playoffs, would would be the, the best team going against the, the Lakers or the Clippers in the finals. But take a step back and look at Giannis Antetokounmpo I think Ben Simmons could be Giannis if he develops a jump shot. And it'll be interesting to see with the pressure of the Christmas Day game, whether Ben Simmons, who's taken just a handful of three-pointers this season, I think this is going to be an opportunity for him to answer the critics and say, look, I'm not afraid of the spotlight. I can take these jumpers. I can space the floor because Giannis Antetokounmpo is now shooting five three-pointers a game at a reasonable clip. So I think this is going to be an opportunity for Ben Simmons to prove that he can be an MVP in today's NBA and he can follow in the footsteps of Giannis Antetokounmpo, who was not a good three-point shooter when he started in this league, but he's developed into one because he's been willing to miss and miss and take a lot of shots and build up confidence. And the only way to do that is to take them in games in the flow of the offense. So, yes, this is going to be a matchup between Giannis Antetokounmpo and Joel Embiid, two MVP candidates. But to me, this is an opportunity for Ben Simmons to step up and show the national, uh, the global audience that he is not afraid to take jumpers. Yeah, he would love to do that on, on Christmas Day. What do you make of the Bucks? And they've done this with Giannis going off, but they've also done it recently without Eric Bledsoe missing some time with a right fibula fracture. How do you think they've adjusted, and has it ultimately been good for them to get some run for some of their other guys out there? Oh, yeah, and not just Eric Bledsoe, but missing Malcolm Brogdon, who is, uh, you know, left in a sign-in trade to the Indiana Pacers. Look, that's what's great about having Giannis Antetokounmpo. He's a center who happens to shoot threes now and who happens to be a point guard. So he can fill just about any hole that you have on the roster. He is like a, a, a souped up, uh, you know, uh, Swiss army knife. You can just do anything on the floor. That doesn't mean that, you know, we shouldn't talk about Wesley Matthews and his ability to step in uh, and be a really good guard for them. Or Dante DiVincenzo, who's been great too. And Brooke Lopez and his brother, Robin Lopez have filled in, uh, you know, picked up the slack too. But, you know, I think what this really speaks to is that Giannis uh, is the do-it-all uh, superstar. There is no hole in his game, maybe at the free throw line, but when you have that guy on your team and credit Mike Budenholzer, the coach, for spreading the floor around him, when you have Giannis in space, it doesn't matter who's starting at point guard, whether it's Eric Bledsoe or Malcolm Brogdon. As long as Giannis has the ball at the top of the key and they have four shooters around him, it is game over. There is no stopping him at the rim. Just ask Julius Randle. There's only one player in the NBA that can fill it up more per game or has done that so far this season than Giannis, and that is James Harden. We'll feature him in that game against the Warriors, who this game looks a whole lot better in the offseason than it does right now. Warriors tied for the worst record in the NBA. James Harden, how many points may he score in this game against Golden State? <laughs> I'm going to say 82. Um, <laughs> really? You know what? Just do one up on Kobe. Uh, you know, he's an L.A. guy. grew up in L.A. And I think when you look at James Harden in this matchup, he probably wants to prove that he, he doesn't forget the fact that the Golden State Warriors have ousted him in the playoffs time and time again. And this is their time. The Houston Rockets may not have a better opportunity uh, against the, the Golden State Warriors than right now with Stephen Curry hurt, with Klay Thompson out, Kevin Durant gone, and Andre Iguodala, who knows where he's going to be come playoff time. It could be on the Houston Rockets if they swing a trade with the Memphis Grizzlies to land Andre Iguodala. But so far right now, I think James Harden, you know, he's averaged 41 points over his last six games. And you keep in mind that this is a bottom seven defense that he's going against in the Golden State Warriors. They don't have the bodies to keep up with the Rockets anymore. I think James Harden is going to go over 50 points. If the line was 50 points on Christmas Day, I'm taking the over. Wow. And maybe even all the way up to 82. If you're we'll see. The, if you're the Warriors, um, are you just playing for a draft pick at this point? What are we going to see when we watch them? Many people for the first time here on Christmas Day and not being able to recognize the team that's been to five straight NBA Finals. Well, look. D'Angelo Russell and, and Draymond Green are going to play hard, uh, but they might be the only two uh, above average players on this roster. I think Eric Paschal, the rookie, has been fantastic as, as a 23-year-old in today's NBA, just stepping in from Villanova and playing like he belongs. I, I just think when you look at this roster, 
it's so hard to compete at this level at day in and day out. Steve Kerr is an excellent head coach, and he said it the other day that this has uh, you know, been a trying season for them, but he's been really impressed with how much energy and effort they put out. But ultimately, I just don't see them being able to compete against the Houston Rockets in this matchup with how much the Houston Rockets, and, and Russell Westbrook, by the way, plays for the Houston Rockets, how much they want to end the Golden State Warriors' uh, reign here on Christmas Day just make a statement game and just blow them out off the floor. So Golden State, it's going to be tough for them to hang, but Draymond Green and D'Angelo Russell, they'll try to make this as competitive as possible. All right, Tom Haberstroh, NBA Weekly Roundup. I went casual for the holidays, and you just totally crushed me. Well done, Tom. Yeah, it's okay. You know what? Not all of us were built for this uh, for this <laughs> Christmas week here. Next Amen. time I'm getting a tux. All right, you're warned, Tom. <laughs> Good job, Tom. All right, thanks, guys.